I did not think that she was ready to kill herself. No, I did not. I just think that it was not suicide. I do not think Mar Marilyn committed suicide. Marilyn Monroe did not commit suicide. She was murdered. She was a uh, girl that knew too much, and she ended up dead one morning. She was murdered. What else could it have been? I don't think she ever killed herself. It was a murder that was designed to look like a suicide. to misunderstand a man's wife spends five years on an island with a strange man would you like it any better if i knew him and it slips her mind <sighs> can we start again yeah. all you can think about is the way i behaved with this poor little okay right. <laughs> with this poor little fly yeah. all you can think of is how i behaved with a a, a, a very a poor little man who wouldn't harm a fly yeah, one more. Huh? That was good, though, huh? I mean, how long does it take to tell a woman my wife's back? It takes me two seconds. It's taken... You, you've had two days. Sorry, George, but we can do it.
sold out Madison Square Garden to celebrate the president's 45th birthday. The Democrats raised a million dollars to resuscitate their bankrupt party that evening, and Diane Carroll was one of the stars. Alan Monroe singing happy birthday to the president of the United States. All of the rumors, all of the innuendos, all the insinuations added that little tinge of excitement and curiosity. So we knew we were part of an historic event. Windows and insinuations were about the possibility of an affair between Marilyn Monroe and President John F. Kennedy. There was an unwritten rule in the 60s. The press didn't report on politicians' extramarital affairs. The papers didn't talk about them, but Kennedy did. Even to British Prime Minister Harold Macmillan, the first time they met. As Kennedy biographer Richard Reeves found out, researching Macmillan's diaries. Macmillan asked Kennedy how he felt. I mean, the man looked like God, but he was, he actually was sick most of the time. And, and, and Kennedy answered, well, Harold, you know, I, I get these terrible headaches if I don't have a woman every three days. Uh, does, that, uh, does that happen to you? <laughs> there is documented evidence of John F. Kennedy's liaisons with a number of women, but not with Marilyn Monroe. There were rumors, though. I heard them back then from a high school buddy who parked cars at Peter Lawford's parties in Malibu who swore he saw them in the back seat of a Rolls Royce. Others had seen them in Malibu and at parties in Palm Springs in New York City while Kennedy was president. Marilyn Monroe was a frequent caller to the White House and the president stopped taking her calls. Marilyn Monroe was big trouble. She was talking to people. She was telling people the president's going to divorce his wife and marry me. And there was never any evidence for that. I no. Mean, the only real solid evidence that someone like me can come up with is telephone records that she regularly called. But all that proved was that uh, basically she felt free to call the White House a lot. And by then, she was in such shape that even the people who knew her and loved her were never sure whether she was talking truth or fantasy. stars in Hollywood history is dead at 36. Marilyn Monroe was found dead in bed under circumstances that were in tragic contrast to her glamorous career as a comic talent. On the surface, she seemed to have such a zest for life. Her international appeal took her from command appearances to the other side of the world and entertainment for Korean GIs. The star led a far from normal childhood and had 12 sets of foster parents, leading her to say in her last interview that she was never used to being happy, so it wasn't something she ever took for granted. She never let her personal feelings interfere with her job, and she was the idol of the G.I.s, the animation of foxhole dreams. She found no happiness in marriage. Her second husband was baseball immortal Joe DiMaggio, and that marriage ended as had her first in divorce. Her third husband was playwright Arthur Miller, and they too separated. Miss Monroe played in 23 films since her debut in 1950, films that grossed $200 million. The Golden Girl received 5,000 fan letters a week, and to those fans, she never let any personal problems dim her screen glamour. Despite flashes of temperament and tantrums, she turned in performances that kept her among the greatest box office favorites in motion picture history. The events of the previous day have never been satisfactorily pieced together. Certainly her psychiatrist visited her, and it's been rumored that Bobby Kennedy did too, and that she had dinner with him. But Mrs. Murray, who was with her all day and indeed discovered the body, denies this. Monroe was found with a telephone lying beside her on the bed, and there's a theory that realizing she had overdosed, she tried to phone for help. But why should she do that with Mrs. Murray there in the house? According to Mrs. Murray, she'd been quiet and subdued all day, and some people have seized upon this as an indication that she was depressed enough to kill herself. I couldn't, as a layman, couldn't describe her as depressed. 
but I know she had many worries, and this particular day she was not lively and enthusiastic. She was very quiet. Was she in the mood of a person who would later deliberately take her own life? I doubt that very much. And she had told me that one of the very first things to warn me that if she takes sedation, which she did every night, sometimes she's apt to forget and would take a second dose too soon. And this is what she had to be very careful about. So that was the first thing that I was concerned about after she, as she died, that that probably had happened when she went to the telephone. The Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office said today Marilyn Monroe's suicide in 1962 is being reinvestigated because of her missing diary and because of allegations that the death certificate signature had been coerced. Here's Heidi Schulman in Los Angeles. Los Angeles County Supervisors called for the new investigation after a flurry of publicity given charges Marilyn Monroe was murdered. A private detective offered $10,000 for her missing diary, claiming it had information about government dealings with gangsters and a plot to kill Fidel Castro. Information he said she got from Robert and John Kennedy. Gossip linked Monroe romantically to the Kennedy brothers, and a friend who claims he read the diary says she was about to tell all when she died. A friend who claims he read the diary says she was about to tell all when she died. Rehearsing some scenes and she was never satisfied. They're never good enough, you know. Well, she was competing with two pretty tough opponents, Betty Grable and Noreen Bacall. The big people in the industry never took her seriously. The public did. The world has. They all loved her and accepted her. But it was so unreal to see that Hollywood didn't. And she was so afraid of being a laugh, and she wanted to prove herself always. Well, I think Marilyn was very insecure. Um, she was insecure about her looks, about her um, not being born in the right family, and being in all the orphanages. But she was strong when it came to uh, certain things, like um, making deals. She, she got pretty tough there at the, at the end. And she was gaining power. Personally, I think she had too many psychiatrists. It was, uh, I think they were making her more insecure by the day. And the surrounding her death. Today in Los Angeles, a private detective called for a new investigation. Dick Shoemaker has that story in our newsroom. Dick? Mary, among those at today's news conference, a retired Los Angeles policeman, the first officer to see Monroe's body. He stated flatly, he thinks the actress was murdered in 1962. We gathered a great deal of information and we determined that it was in fact a murder. Uh, this evidence was presented to the district attorney at that time, who refused to have anything to do with it. What hard evidence do you have? I mean, you made a flat statement Marilyn Monroe was murdered. Yes. What hard evidence do you have to prove that? It's in the coroner's report. What evidence, though? The amount of uh, barbiturates in the bloodstream. Marilyn Monroe's house was being remodeled on the day of her death. There was no drinking water in the entire house. How does one swallow 47 to 50 sleeping pills? And yet, during the autopsy, it's not found in her stomach lining. That brings up the question, if she didn't swallow it, how did she get it? There's only two possible answers. Neither one of them are very nice. One is by a needle, which is the most probable way. The other is through a suppository. But that's not evidence of murder. It isn't? No. Well, it certainly does away with the suicide theory, I think. The Los Angeles District Attorney's position today is the same it was five months ago. There isn't a scintilla of evidence to suggest any possibility, even the most remote, of murder. Today, the district attorney reaffirmed there will be no new inquiry. However, private investigators say they'll continue to press for a reopening of the case surrounding the circumstances of how Marilyn Monroe died. Rob asked Norman and Eunice to stay on that evening and look after Marilyn. That diary, I would say, would contribute greatly to her death. The detective theorizes someone in the CIA killed Monroe to keep her quiet. That's at odds with the coroner's report, which said she died from an overdose of sleeping pills. But news stories that a coroner's investigator said he was coerced into signing the death certificate prompted supervisors to call for a new probe. To me, after 20 years, it's time to clear up this case once and for all. 
An assistant district attorney is reviewing the information in the case, but he says that 20 years after Marilyn Monroe's death, it is so stale it would take huge resources to uncover anything new. Heidi Schulman, NBC News, Los Angeles. And nothing new was discovered, although speculation surrounding Monroe's death continues to this day. Dr. Greenson took the secret of Marilyn Monroe's death to his grave. In a taped phone conversation, he told of the terrible burden he had carried. I can't explain myself or defend myself without revealing things that I don't want to reveal. I feel like I can't, you know, you can't turn around and say, well, I'm taking this and I won't tell you that. It's a terrible position to be. But I have to say I can't talk about it because I can't tell the whole story. But he did give one tantalizing clue. Listen, you know, close the brownie head. Early morning of December 15, 1966, New York State Police staged a raid on Spindell's home. Stating that they were there to confiscate illegal wiretapping equipment, they also took a number of tape recordings. Later, when Spindell was arrested and taken into New York City and put in jail, uh, there are big front page stories about how he applied uh, for the return of his uh, equipment and also for the return of the tapes. And there's one specific article which appeared in the New York Times and in the New York Journal American at the time that uh, he had tapes that would indicate that Merrill Monroe did not commit suicide. He had tapes that would indicate that Merrill Monroe did not commit suicide. Still another look into the death of Marilyn Monroe. The results were announced this morning and Scott Osborne was there. The Los Angeles District Attorney's Office spent three and a half months following up allegations that Marilyn Monroe might have died as the result of foul play, but the investigation showed no evidence indicating she died of any other cause but suicide or perhaps an accidental overdose of barbiturates. Uh, we once in a while bumped in information that would cause us to think we might be on the trail of something, and in each case that panned out to be nothing whatsoever. So at this stage, on the, on the basis of the information we've seen, there is no justification in my mind, uh, and I think on the part of our Bureau of Investigation as well, uh, to go forward. The investigation dismissed claims of murder leveled by Los Angeles private investigator Milo Spiriglio and New York freelance writer George Carposi, among others. Our feeling is, and expressing my own at least, is that there is, I don't reasonably anticipate that new evidence would come forth that would cause us to change our opinion. It could happen, uh, but not on the basis of what we have and what we've seen. The L.A. District Attorney John Vandekamp said his hope was that Marilyn Monroe be permitted to rest in peace. She is entitled to that, the D.A. said. And Marilyn kept a personal diary. She made a point of writing down some of her private conversations with Robert Kennedy. In this diary, Marilyn may have written out her own death sentence. She did keep a diary, yes. I saw it. And so did Bobby. That's why Bobby got very angry. It was the day that I was there that he discovered it. And he said, Marilyn, what is this? And she just said, oh, well, I've just been keeping some notes so that I could remember what, you know, talk about with you and all that. And he threw it on the, on the, the couch or the table and, and he said, get rid of this, get rid of this immediately. And that's when the relationship started going down the tubes. I always felt that that diary was a walking time bomb she was carrying around with her and keeping in her file cabinet, which, by the way, was broken into the night of her death. Keeping in her file cabinet, which, by the way, was broken into the night of her death. At the time of her death, her psychiatrist was Dr. Ralph Greenson. According to investigators, Greenson arranged for Eunice Murray to become Marilyn's housekeeper. Mrs. Murray was to play a pivotal role in the death of Marilyn Monroe. And Marilyn was getting very suspicious of her. I don't, and I don't think she knew why she was getting suspicious. She just started saying, I, Mrs. Murray is acting very weird and I'm, I'm, I wonder what's going on. She was getting very suspicious. And it wasn't known until long after Marilyn's death and probably back in the mid-70s when Mrs. Murray uh, wrote her autobiography about her times with Marilyn that it was the first time that she ever admitted, and she didn't do this, I might say, to the police, but she admitted that she was a psychiatric nurse 
and had worked with psychiatric patients before in the recommendation of Maryland psychiatrist Dr. Greenson. This is also the case of a psychiatrist really spying on you in your own home, too. But uh, she made it known to me that she was going to get rid of Mrs. Murray. And uh, I remember her making a reference to, like, quote, I've got a spy in my own house, unquote. So it can't lead really to the conclusion that Miss Monroe was murdered. Lead to the conclusion that Miss Monroe was murdered. Does this letter prove old rumors that Marilyn Monroe was romantically involved with a Kennedy? It was written to Monroe by Jean Kennedy Smith, the sister of New York Senator Robert F. Kennedy. It states, understand that you and Bobby are the new item. We all think you should come with him when he comes back east. While vague, it could fuel speculation that the two had a relationship after they were reportedly seen together at various events in the early 60s, including at President John F. Kennedy's 40th birthday, where she famously sang happy birthday to him. The letter is part of a collection of the Hollywood icon's belongings that will be auctioned off by Julian's Auctions in Beverly Hills in November. I went to the door and Mrs. Murray admitted me. She showed me into Marilyn's bedroom. Marilyn was laying face down on the bed, her hands down by her, her side, her face was buried on a pillow. The best way I can describe it, it was a soldier's position when she was face down. And um, I asked um, who discovered this scene, and Mrs. Murray said that, that she did. And I said, you know, well, tell me about it. How did... And this is Mrs. Murray's story to me. She said... Uh, about 10 o'clock, I went to bed, and the light was on under Marilyn's door. And I just assumed Marilyn was sleeping or talking to the telephone uh, with her friends. So I went to bed and went to sleep. And she said, I woke up at midnight. And she said, I had to go to the bathroom. So uh, the light was still on underneath Marilyn's door, and she became concerned. She walked over and tried the door, and it was locked from the inside. She rapped on the door and tried to rouse Marilyn. She couldn't get any response, so she called Dr. Greenson. She was very concerned at this point. This is her story to me, at any rate. Todd called Dr. Greenson, who lived a short distance away, and he came over as soon as he could and broke a window outside and gained entry into Marilyn's bedroom and found her dead on the bed. At which time he called Dr. Engelberg, who was Marilyn's regular physician, who also lived in in the immediate neighborhood, and he came over and pronounced her dead. Now, according to this story that I'm receiving at this time, this is all occurring shortly after midnight. And I got the phone call at 4.25 a.m. And if this story is true, this means that these people are staying in this house for four hours with a dead body. It means that these people or staying in this house for four hours with a dead body. I asked him, well, why did you not call sooner? Why did you let us know sooner? And no one wanted to answer me. They tried to ignore me. But I thought that was important, so I pressed for an answer. And finally, Dr. Greenson spoke up. Incidentally, Dr. Greenson did most of the talking when I was there. He, Dr. Greenson said, we had to get permission from the publicity department of the studio before we can notify anybody. Now that is rank nonsense. That's not an answer. Uh, certainly no truth to it. John Minor would go on the record in a memorandum stating his disagreements with the official story. The forensic evidence, including samples from Marilyn's stomach contents and her internal organs, vanished. Without this vital evidence, no conclusions as to the real cause of death could be determined. We asked John Minor what happened to the organ samples. They appear to have disappeared. They are not to be found. Are there any other cases where organ samples have disappeared before? No. Are there any other cases where organ samples have disappeared before? No. She was in a very good mood because we were on the beach not far from the Peter Lawford home. Here's a video of, the, of that shoot, right? Right. That was done by a very nice lady uh, who happened to be uh, on tour in California then. And she sent that uh, to me and said, if you can use it, I 
Let you have it. She was murdered. What else could it have been? I don't think she ever killed herself. It was a murder that was designed to look like a suicide. I can see her getting more and more depressed, losing track of time. One pill, two pills, three pills. We also learned more today about the FBI's secret files on Marilyn Monroe. They reveal some of her friends were suspected communists, and she once considered traveling to the Soviet Union. The FBI kept files on her from 1955 until her death in 1962. Theodore Curry called a press conference he for help. and announced his verdict. Ms. Monroe has suffered from psychiatric disturbance for a long time. On the basis of all the information obtained, it is our opinion that the case is a problem with suicide. But for one man at the very heart of the events following her death, the suicide verdict was a mistake. In 1962, John Minor was a deputy district attorney of Los Angeles, and he was present at the autopsy. At the outset, he accepted the official line. But then a few days after Marilyn's death, Minor interviewed her psychiatrist, Dr. Ralph Greenson. What he heard at that meeting was to convince him that Marilyn had not committed suicide. As you know, the greatest catastrophe a psychiatrist can suffer is for his patient to kill herself. So he said, my opinion that she did not commit suicide can be considered to be biased. But Marilyn Monroe made two tapes for me. Greenson said Marilyn had made the tapes in the last few weeks. He offered to play them on condition Minor didn't reveal their content. Dear Doctor, you are the only person who will ever know the most private secret thoughts of Marilyn Monroe. It was Greenson's belief that if I listened to the tape, I would not have to rely on his opinion that she did not commit suicide. That the tapes would tell me whether she did or she didn't. Right. Marilyn Monroe died 51 years ago today. Historians have long written about the possibility she had a relationship with President John F. Kennedy. Nita Nair looks at a new book which claims Monroe actually called First Lady Jackie Kennedy to talk about it. The long-rumored love affair between President John F. Kennedy and Marilyn Monroe is at the center of Christopher Anderson's new book, These Few Precious Days, The Final Year of Jack with Jackie. Presidential historian Doug Weed thinks Anderson's sensational revelations could well be true. It's the sort of thing that's unbelievable but really happens in history. Some of these things we're uncovering right now will move from uh, speculation to fact as, as time progresses. Anderson writes that when Jackie first entered the White House, she feared she'd never see her husband. Instead, sharing both home and office meant that she saw Kennedy many times a day, eventually deciding the White House years were the happiest time of my life. That this window used to be the door in the olden days. But Anderson also reports that Jackie knew about all of JFK's women. He says the affairs upset her, but she was willing to turn a blind eye as long as he didn't publicly embarrass her. It was his relationship with Marilyn Monroe that seemed to bother her the most. In large part because Marilyn was a loose cannon who could go public at any time, causing a scandal that would obliterate her husband's reputation, destroy her marriage, and hold her up to public ridicule. He claims that Monroe, aware her career was fading, thought Kennedy would marry her. Can't you just see me as first lady, she told a friend. Anderson says Monroe even called Jackie and told her of JFK's promise to marry her. Jackie was unfazed. Marilyn, you'll marry Jack, that's great. And you'll move into the White House and you'll assume the responsibilities of First Lady. And I'll move out and you'll have all the problems. Weed says Jackie's acceptance of Kennedy's infidelity could be rooted in her relationship with the man she trusted most. She was closest to her dad, loved her dad. Her dad loved, adored her. And yet he had many infidelities in his life. So maybe she could come in some curious way to accept the fact that her husband, Jack, could love her and still be unfaithful to her. 
JFK, Marilyn Monroe, <laughs> assassination. Oh, some of the fun stuff. Yeah, let's <laughs> move into that. What do you know about that? A lot. They had had a big old Xerox of this document that was a wiretap of Marilyn Monroe dated a couple of days before they found her dead. And it was signed by uh, the CIA guy, James Jesus Angleton III. Now, he was a famous fanatical leak, mole hunter and leak stopper at the agency back in the early 60s. A, ph a fanatical. And it, it, they had wiretapped Marilyn Monroe's phone, and she was calling up Bobby Kennedy and a friend of hers named Rothberg in New York, who's an art dealer, saying that she was going to hold a press conference to tell the whole world what Kennedy had told her, quoting the objects from outer space from the 40s found in New Mexico. And to my surprise when I was reading it, here I found an intelligence document written by the CIA regarding this conversation President Kennedy had with Marilyn Monroe. And at that time, along with other documents I obtained, I realized that this was confirmation that he was, in fact, telling her the truth about this event. And when I realized that, I was shocked. And it actually made me nervous uh, because it was its such a phenomenal event. It would literally change the world. It potentially could change the world. It's such a phenomenal event. It would literally change the world. It potentially could change the world. When I read the report and got to the point where I saw that Marilyn was no longer speaking and these other men, whoever they were, in the house and potentially moving her body around, I realized at that moment in time that she probably did not commit suicide. It was a murder that was facing the same demise that Marilyn did. Success has given me everything. Because of you, I can now feel what I've never felt before. I was very much moved. I became aware that the sex idol of the world was in fact a very intelligent, witty human being who, while she had problems, had the will and the ability to overcome them. First time, her autopsy will be reconstructed and will finally reveal her cause of death. Sunday, the 5th of August, 1962. The Schaefer Ambulance Company answers a call to go to the aid of a young woman who is dying of a drugs overdose. For the world's media, the events of that night would become one of the longest-running mysteries on or off the Hollywood screen. I got a phone call from my city editor in New York. I worked then for the New York Herald Tribune. He said, Bulletin just came through. Marilyn Rowe is dead. Can you get to her house fast? I received the call in the middle of the night, on an early Sunday morning, from Arthur Jacobs, uh, asking me to come to the office right away, that uh, there was an emergency. Got out of bed quickly, dressed very fast, and went next door where Billy Woodville, who was a photographer, lived. And I said, Billy, Marilyn's dead. Marilyn's home was in the fashionable suburb of Brentwood, 12305 Fifth Elena Drive. At first, all the signs in her bedroom were that she'd taken her own life. At the bedside, I remember clearly it was the empty bottle of Nembutal, which I had given her. And I remember having the impulse of saying, oh, God, I'm going to get involved in this. Maybe I'll hide the bottle. I said, oh, the hell with it. Uh, I didn't do anything wrong, and I'm not going to disturb any evidence in an important situation. I left it there. I heard from someone that the phone was off the hook in Maryland's bedroom. Well, I had a source at the telephone company, and my source came back and said the Secret Service has already been here and taken our records. Kind of weird. And the Secret Service has already been here and taken our records. Kind of weird. A matter of weeks before she died, she signed a new, improved contract with Fox. Moreover, 
she recorded two audio tapes for Ralph Greenson, which demonstrate that she was in an extremely positive frame of mind, both about her career and about her future. I am going to be the highest paid actress in Hollywood. Double what they pay Liz Taylor. To her friends, she seemed anything but suicidal. And that would lead them to an extraordinary conclusion. That Marilyn Monroe might have been murdered. Diane, who were opposed to the whole Kennedy administration. They believed that if Marilyn died in suspicious circumstances, then Robert Kennedy would be interrogated. Robert Kennedy was the attorney general. And any interrogation into a murder would have finished his career on the spot. In turn, it would have led to the demand for the president's resignation. But is there any evidence from the autopsy that supports either enema theory? Noguchi and Minor discovered some discoloration in the tissue of her colon. Minor believes an animal containing the fatal Nembutal could have produced it. The discoloration could be a tissue reaction, an inflammatory reaction to this drug, which is an organic acid and very tissue irritating. going to talk about what happened next and joining us now is Jim Baker. He is an expert on Marilyn Monroe. He is the author of a new book entitled The Empty Glass, a fact-based thriller about the death of screen icon Marilyn Monroe. Good morning to you. Good morning. It's been 50 years and we are still yes. talking about the rumors surrounding her death. Right. Was it a murder? Did she commit suicide? Which right. one is it? Uh, what, what do we know here? What have you been able to find? Well, we've been able to find a lot of contradictory information and the fact of the matter is that um, we, we can't say absolutely for sure what has happened here, but there are an enormous number of mysteries that persist. Conflicting testimonies, missing evidence, it just goes on and on and on. So all of that stuff sort of leads to the fact that this remains, you know, one of the biggest mysteries of the 20th century. So what specifically happened the night she died? What do we know? Well, we, there's a lot of, again, you can't quite get to the bottom of any of it, but the baseline is she was living in a house that she had probably bought about six months before in Brentwood, California. She was living with a live-in housekeeper named Eunice Murray. Uh, Eunice said that around midnight of that night, 50 years ago tonight, she found, she went into the hall and she saw a light under Marilyn's door, got concerned about that, knocked on the door, got no answer, called her psychotherapist. The psychotherapist came over, broke the window to her bedroom, got into the bedroom, found her dead on the floor, I'm, I'm sorry, on the bed with the phone in her hand and this was at 12:30 at night but they did not call the cops until four hours later so all of those events don't quite line up what's the storyline here what's the issue with that is there an issue in that storyline well the issue with that storyline is first of all the next day they changed the time frame so it went from 12:30 to 3 a.m right and there's also an, an enormous number of other testimony from people like peter lawford an actor uh joe dimaggio jr's son that contradicts that central thesis. I'm just telling you what Eunice Murray said happened. Sure. That was the first version. Your thesis is that she was murdered. No, my, not necessarily. My thesis is she could have been murdered. And who would have done it well, under that thesis? you know, you, I hate to be really speculative here, but you can't get too far in the landscape of this case without running into the name Kennedy. Uh, and I think there's absolutely no doubt at all that the Kennedy brothers were having sexual relations with Marilyn Monroe. Multiple brothers. Yes. Uh, Bobby, the attorney general, JFK, the president of the United States, uh, they sort of handed her off to each other. I don't see how anyone can say that did not happen. Could it have just been really shady, not completely thorough police work? That, you know what, maybe Marilyn Monroe, she really did just commit suicide, and the right investigation didn't take place after. She could have committed suicide, sure. However, the big thing that argues against that was the, the, the amount of drugs drugs that were found in her bloodstream. In order to have the level of drugs that she had in her bloodstream, she would have had to have taken at least 50 sleeping pills in an incredibly short period of time uh, in order to, to get to that, right? And 
In addition to that, there was no water glass found in her locked bedroom, and there was no water in her locked bedroom. How does that happen? Yeah, so the mystery continues. I did not think that she was ready to kill herself. No, I did not. I just think that it was not suicide. I do not think Mar Marilyn committed suicide. Mara Moreau did not commit suicide. She was murdered. She was a uh, girl that knew too much, and she ended up dead one morning. Was a uh, girl that knew too much, and she ended up dead one morning.